Additional scattered showers, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder or two here and there as we go through the evening, especially to the east and southeast out west. You know, we're pretty quiet as we go through the night. Uh, we'll have low temperatures mainly in the mid 60s west river to the east, either side of 60 with rain tapering off as we head toward and beyond the midnight hour. From there, we keep an eye on Wednesday, another split along the river for the thermometer, but also see some pop-up thunderstorms that pack a punch out west. Details on that and the rest of your forecast are on the way, but until then, first to four starts right now. Live from Killoland Media Group, Killoland News, first at four. Coming up, who's applying for cannabis business licenses in Minnesota? Plus, we take you to Italy where crews are racing to find more survivors from a sunken yacht and how athletes can stay safe in the hot temperatures. Good afternoon, thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. In about two hours, the Harrisburg City Council will turn its attention to a topic that has received a lot of attention, a proposed men's prison between their town and Canton. The state is seeking to connect the proposed prison's wastewater into Harrisburg's sewer system. Couple lines, Jordan DeSmit is there and he joins us now live with more. Good afternoon, Jordan. Hey, Don and Kelly. Well, the vote is going to happen uh, right behind me and the key there is proposed. The proposed prison is supposed to go about five miles south of Harrisburg and eight miles northwest of Canton. What they're voting on tonight is whether that wastewater can go from that prison over here to Harrisburg. Now, there would be some advantages to Harrisburg. The city of Harrisburg would receive $7.2 million. That would pay for some loans and it would lower costs of utilities to Harrisburg residents. But there's also an organization around here called NOPE, Neighbors Opposing Prison Expansion. And they're a little concerned about the cost of this prison. It would cost a little over $560 million. They're also concerned that it's in a spot where there's not a lot of infrastructure. So it would cost taxpayer dollars to transfer Support these prisoners if they would need any medical support, any uh, lawyer advice, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide here at about six o'clock. They'll come to the decision a little after six o'clock and come back here at about 4:30. I'll have another live shot for you, another report at 4:30, at five, and then I'll have a full report for you at 10 o'clock. So reporting live in Harrisburg, Jordan DeSmith, Kettleland News. All right, thanks a lot, Jordan. A man is behind bars in Watertown facing a long list of serious charges after an alleged assault. Court documents say that Marcus Weber went to the victim's home intoxicated on Friday. He was able to get inside and hit her in the face, breaking her jaw, according to authorities. Authorities say that Weber ran and was arrested a day later. He is charged with attempted first-degree murder, aggravated assault, domestic, and burglary. Weber is being held on a $100,000 cash-only bond. A sex offender on probation has been arrested for more sex crimes in Aberdeen. Police say officers were called for a suspicious car near a park in the southwestern part of town yesterday. When the officers tried to meet with the people inside, the car took off. Police say they later found a juvenile that was in the car and learned of a possible sexual assault. The suspect was found and later ran from police. Police say they found the 30-year-old man hiding in a garage. He was arrested for a list of charges, including rape and kidnapping. Police say the suspect and victim knew each other and had an online relationship. One man is dead after a motorcycle versus pickup crash in Presho yesterday afternoon. Authorities say that a motorcycle had gotten off I-90 and was heading north when it failed to stop at a stop sign. The motorcycle then collided with the pickup. The motorcycle went into the ditch and rolled. The 59-year-old driver was thrown. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he died from his injuries. The driver of the pickup was not hurt. Well, we are getting a break from that hot weather today. Yeah, a little bit of rain out there as well, Adam. Well, if you're East River, you're getting a break. Out to the West, yeah, it's another day where we uh, very much were able to uh, get the feeling that we're still very much within the summer season. Compare that to what they have downtown, 63 degrees right now. Uh, with an easterly wind of 7 miles per hour, more rain moving through the area as we speak as well. Uh, not really all that much better farther east as you head over toward Laverne where we have equally gray skies in place, not to mention a bit of a breeze at times as well. Compare that to Rapid City. Beautiful blue skies above 
and it's almost 30 degrees warmer. It is 92 right now out in Rapid City, and that's even with a northerly breeze trying to take the edge off of that around 9 miles per hour. Uh, really, it has been a case of getting all of that heat to stay out to the west. We did have a lot of storm reports from yesterday. We'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but for now, 90 in Phillip, 94 Pine Ridge, uh, 92 for Buffalo, but 79 in Pier. And then you see that sharp cutoff as you head east. 68 for Aberdeen, 63 Watertown and Brookings at best. 71 in Spencer over in Iowa, Yankton and Marshall both at 70. So there is the rain, mainly in eastern and southeastern Kelowna. It's going to stay there for a little while longer as this pushes on down uh, to the south and east over the next couple of hours. Tomorrow, and we're going to have another split along the river. We try to rebound a little bit more for the day, at least the East River in eastern and northeastern Kelowna. We'll go 70s and low 80s in general to the southeast and northeast for that matter. But out west, it's going to be another hot day as we climb well into the 90s in many locations and even toe the line of the century mark. But we need to keep an eye on the skies out west as well. We'll talk about that and we'll go through the rest of your forecast as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. Well, new numbers show who is fighting to get in the cannabis business in Minnesota. More than 1,800 applications have been filed for lotteries to win what will eventually come a business license. As David Schumann with our CBS affiliate Minneapolis reports, more than half of those applications are not from Minnesota. Angela Dawson is done filling out her application for Minnesota's Office of Cannabis Management. Good 50 pages and a couple of meltdowns. I'm relieved to be done with the confusion. As CEO of Bold North, Angela is hoping to win a lottery for a business license pre-approval later this year. Not quite licenses yet, but enough to start planting seeds in the ground on a larger scale. She's one of nearly 600 applicants in her business category, competing for just 100 licenses. The stakes are high. Taking all the categories together, like cannabis retailer, wholesaler, or delivery service, there are more than 1,800 applicants crossing their fingers in the lottery. Less than half of those live in Minnesota. It really does make me concerned for that Minnesota craft industry that we've been so strongly trying to create here. A Minnesota statutes do not have a residency requirement, so we received uh, applications from all around the country. For Angela, it raises the specter of large out-of-state corporations snapping up licenses she feels should be going to local entrepreneurs like her. The OCM says limiting this first round of applicants to those who met social equity criteria likely filtered out companies like that. We're going to be going down to the individual level looking at ownership. That's to make sure there aren't any large corporations that might be trying to sneak in. So now it's hurry up and wait for Angela, working to launch her business while also dealing with existential uncertainty. And I don't want to invest too much because I don't know if I'm going to have the license or not. David Schumann, WCCO News. Dawson says Bold North intends to be a cultivator growing marijuana as well as a retailer.